Father, we say good morning to everyone. We say good morning to you. You may be viewing via Facebook or by other means. We welcome you to our Sunday school session this morning. Uh, and as always, let us begin with a word of prayer. Precious Father, again, we come before your presence with thanksgiving in our heart. Thanking you to God for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. To God, we thank you for the sunshine. And we thank you for the rain. We pray for your blessing upon everyone that's present here today and everyone that may be on their way. We pray also for your blessing upon the sick and the shut in. Pray that you would comfort all the bereaved families, dear God. We pray for your blessing upon this church and upon every church that stands open in your holy name. And then, dear God, we pray for your blessing upon this Sunday school session and our worship session today. But we want to do all things to your honor and to your glory. We ask it all in this sweet present name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <coughs> oh. We are in our fall quarter here. And our devotional reading will be coming from Psalms 104, verses 1 through 9. Psalms 104, verses 1 through 9. Reads as follows. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God. Thou art very great. Thou art clothed with honor and majesty. Who covers thyself with light as with a garment. Who stretches out the heaven like a curtain. Who layeth the beam of his chambers in the water. Who maketh the clouds his chariot. Who walketh upon the wings of the wind. Who maketh his angels spirits his ministers of flame and fire, who laid the foundation of the earth, that it should not be removed forever. Thou covereth it with the deep, as with a garment. The water stood above the mountains. At thy rebuke they fled. At the voice of thy thunder they hasted away. They go up by the mountains, they go down by the valleys unto the place which thou hast founded for them. Thou hast set a bound that they may not pass over, that they turn not again to cover the earth. Psalm 104, verses 1 through 9. May God have a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our soul. <coughs> I'm going to now turn it over to our teacher for the day, which will be none other than our brother Wyatt. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Again, I say we say good morning to those who uh, may be watching by Facebook or other means, but and, and uh, my guests in the house and put all this pressure on me. <laughs> Brother Frank, I printed off my Sunday school lesson, but I didn't print off the topic. Time to party. Time to party? Okay. We're going to sing and dance. We're going to sing and dance. <laughs> and uh, the key verse, the key in mind verse is, then the prophetess, uh, prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, and took a tam uh, tambourine in her hand with all the women, and they went out, and they parted. They danced. So, God had promised Moses that he would be with him as he led the Israelites out of Egypt into the land flowing with milk and honey. Moses trusted God and obeyed. He led the people through the wilderness as, as the Egyptian army tried to one last time to recapture them for the orders of Pharaoh. Israel Israel had been slave. I looked it up, Brother Frank. Israel had been a slave for 400 years. Boy, I got that. 430 years. 
and they had been crying to God because the Israelites were treating them, I mean the Egyptians were treating them pretty bad. They were pretty bad. And they had been crying out to God and crying out to God. So God raised up a deliverer in a what well, we don't call a savior like Jesus but D, but you know he he, he, he uh, raised up a deliverer to get the people from the oppression and from the oppressor. Now, we are descendants of pretty well the same thing. We don't like to talk about it today because in this political climate and they talk about wokeness and all that kind of stuff, but we can kind of sympathize what they were going with because we too, although I wasn't a slave, you know, my predecessors, my forefathers were slaves. We too cried out. And guess what we did, uh, Brother Lighty, when we, we was crying out back in? We sang songs, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Now, we come up and got educated, found out the songs for the secret messages and all that kind of stuff. But when I was down here and y'all was teaching me, we was <laughs> we was singing them songs, Sweet Low, Sweet Chair. We want to get out of that oppression. That's right. That's basically what this, this uh, lesson is about, is that singing to God for what he had done for them. Now, this... This lesson really started after a whole lot of stuff had happened, but some great, some, some wonderful had just happened, and Moses had to sing about it. So the Israelite was in, in, in slavery. God had raised up a deliverer, a whole he had a whole lot of stuff going on that he had planned. And God's plan. He, he always worked out his plan. He took the child of a slave. And had him raised by the oppressors, learned of the oppressors' ways, and then his eyes was open that the oppressor was cruel, then God sent him back. Now go back to the oppressor with his Pharaoh and tell him to leave, let my people go. So it's ironic that in this lesson we're talking about singing praise to God that, that Brother Franklin and God picked a musician from this church and one of the Bible storytellers from this church. You, you did it. So the lesson picked up after something that miraculous had happened. So the lesson text, Exodus 15, <coughs> 1 through 3. That's the, the first one they picked up after something that miraculous had happened. Then Moses, then St. Moses, Exodus 15 and 1. Then, Mo, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord that he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his riders have been thrown into the sea. Pastor Young, when he sent Moses down there and told Pharaoh, and you're going to help me with this one, sent down there and told Pharaoh, and let my children go. Then uh, Pharaoh, he said, let, first, first of all, I look back at Nadine, I look, he said, let my people go so they can go in the wilderness and serve God. Moses and Pharaoh said, no. Let my people go so they can go and serve God. He kept saying no. So then the ten plagues came. After the ten plagues came and a few of them plagues, Pharaoh was weakening uh, Brother Lyon, he was weakening. He was, he was, he was seeing that he was going something else going on here. I ain't, I ain't fighting against, against Moses. But then God turned around and said, I'm gonna harden his heart. I'm gonna make him mad and he ain't gonna let you go. Is that double jeopardy? <coughs> That's faith test. Hmm? That's faith test. Moses. Sir. Faith test. Faith check. Okay. Moses didn't get, Moses didn't get like he was going to quit, but he was just hard. I go down there, I do what you say, you had all the plagues to come along, and then he'd get weak, and then he'd feel like he didn't do it, and then go back and tell God, I did what you said, yeah, don't worry about it, but I'm going to harden his heart, he still ain't going to let you go. And I know God don't do nothing wrong, I'm just looking at it the way we look. Get that double jab. I go do what you say, and then you turn around and say, don't do it. Well, Pharaoh too had to learn that God is God. Because he said, I'm going to show Pharaoh my might. At that particular time, 
the Egyptian army was the most powerful military might on earth. Just like we think we are today. What I mean we are, we have to learn that God is still the almighty. So Pharaoh them had all them other gods and stuff. Pharaoh recognized that something else was going on because if one of them played, uh, Pharaoh told him, said, look, get out of here. If I see your face again, I'm a kid. He was hot. But then after the last, after last, last play come, he said, take your folks and get out over here. It was too much going on. It was too much. God had killed the firstborn of everybody and everything that didn't do what he, just like he said. I will show him my might. So when Moses sang this about, and I was singing to the Lord, for he had triumphed graciously with the horse and his rider has been thrown in the sea. So after the last plea, when Pharaoh told him, get out, go, take all your stuff with him, God said, go to your neighbor and ask him for some stuff. Ask him for jewelry, ask him for silver, ask him for cattle and everything. The Bible says, and God showed favor to the children of Israel, and they went to the Israelites, and they went to them. Even some of the Israelites, I mean, some of the Egyptians that didn't think that was right, they went with them. They took all that stuff with them. And the Bible says it was 600,000 men, not counting women and children, and they all left. Pharaoh was at the house open, and his advisors come in and said, you let all them people go. Hmm? We ain't got nobody to do no work. <laughs> you don't let any one of them go. We got to pick all this cotton ourselves. We got we got to build all these rich people. They love to build stuff. We got to do all this stuff itself. Pharaoh, I'm saying this. Pharaoh had been defeated in his mind a little bit. But now they were saying, you don't let them do you like this. So he rose up and he told his army, you know, you're right. You go back and get them jokers. He got 600 of his tanks, we call them, his chariots, we call them tanks. He got his best war walk weapons and took off after them. When he took off after them, the, Egypt, the uh, Israelites, God told him, I can't pronounce the name of these words. I ain't going to be on the end of this hand, I can. But there was two mountains in the Red Sea. And God go said, go right between them and sit right there. And I see now that God too was showing Israel and the Egyptians my might. For he sent them right there where the trap is. A mountain on this side, a mountain on this side, and the Red Sea. So when the army took off after them, the Israelites in the back seen the army coming. Everybody got scared. And they went to Moses and they cried out to the Lord. Now, it said they got scared, but also, Pastor Young, it said they cried out to the Lord. Guess what God and uh, Moses went to the Lord with the Israelites? They seen these folks coming. You, they complained. They said it was best for us to stay down there. You done brought us out here to die. It was best we stayed down there being slaves. So, you know, they got very scared. And guess what God said to them? Why is you talking to me about this stuff? What do you have in your hand? What do you got in your hand? At the rod. He said, go back and tell them this. In, in uh, Exodus 14, 13 through 14. The Lord said, tell the people this. Do not be afraid. Stand firm. And the, and the New Testament, I mean, uh, King James said, and see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord accomplished for you today. Right now. It's going to happen today. I want y'all to see what I'm fixing to do. He said, for the Egyptian whom you see today, you will never see again. You won't see him no more. The Lord will fight for you if you only keep still. Don't be running around and watch me do this. Sit right here. I told you come sit right here. Sit right here and watch what I do to your enemy. We have 
song that we sing, Brother Frank, the song that we sing, that's the song that the Bible said that was the first song, one of the first songs that we sang in the Bible. You know how you used to, when you be up here teaching, you'll go back in and you'll be quoting some song. I said, I'm going to imitate Brother Frank today. Mm -hmm. And I looked at this. Google is one of the best tools I've ever seen for, for, for Bible study. But it'll blow your mind. I put in Google Psalms praise the Lord. And so many pop up there, I said, no. <laughs> he overwhelmed me. I, <laughs> And Google gave God so many praises, I couldn't even pick all of them. But there's one song that we sang here, and it, and it, it was talking about the Lord. And he told them to stand still and watch the delivery of the Lord. And, and we sang the song, Shirley Caesar sang it. She put it out, and Tabitha sang it here. And, and I'm going to quote some of the verses in it. It said, Jesus, oh Jesus, how I love calling your name. Jesus, Jesus. Every day your name is the same. And I get to this part right here. When my troubles surround me, I didn't have to despair. Mm -hmm. That's just like they did. The Lord said, what you, what you what you got in your hand? What is y'all crying about? What is wrong with y'all? I am God. Don't do it. But they didn't see it. If we see it, we see it. Did y'all see what I just did down there in Egypt? Yeah. <clears throat> that was me. It was me. Ain't y'all getting it yet? He a chump compared to me, but he had to show him. In the in the in, in B part, he said he said uh, uh, in 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 in, in Shirley Caesar's song, when my troubles surround me, I didn't have to spare. Lord, you told me you'd be right there. He told Moses, I'm gonna be with you all the way through this process. It ain't gonna be you. It's gonna be me. When he said, go down there and tell them, uh, I'm going to take y'all out of here. And tell them, I sent you. If they say, he said, if they say, who are you? Tell them, it's me. I am. I am is good enough. I am everything. I am the one going to do it. I am the all. It's me. I, I'm doing this. I didn't have to despair. I, I told that be right there. It seemed like all my problems had just begun. I didn't have to worry no more. There was already one. That song, uh, uh, Lady E, I said, it's just like it. The battle was already won. Pharaoh didn't know it. Moses didn't know it yet. And the Israelites didn't see it. 430 years, they had it. Do what the folks said. Build all them pyramids. Build everybody's house. Work, work in, in, in the house. Do everything that they said do. And God just brought them out just like that with his might. He brought them out with his might. So, he told them to watch this day. Watch what I'm fixing to do. And then when they sung that song, he said, he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider have died thrown in the sea. He told the Israelite, he told Moses, what you got in your hand? Moses stretched out the rod. Now, even in our mindset, we might not see a sea. You know, sea is pretty big. But I want to get y'all just look at the Tennessee River. Something you something y'all know. Some of us have been to the army and been overseas and we don't seen the sea, but those of us that have never seen the sea before, just look at all that water. And while God was out there, he said, I'm going to be with you. Matter of fact, I'm going to be with you when you're walking through here. So God came, I sent an angel to get in front of the people in a pillar of fire. Just like a pillar of fire. So they can see. He put a pillar, a cloud behind him so the enemy can't see. He said, stretch out your rod and the water would depart, and the water departed, and y'all would walk through on dry land, and he called the winds, all the stuff he had made, came through there all night long, blowing on that land, and dried it up. In our mind, that don't, I don't see how he did that. If you look at the Tennessee River, the water standing right there, standing on this side, this time he blowing on the water, he blowing on the water until it dry. He got a cloud behind them, 
that had been walking with them the whole two weeks they was out there in the, in the wilderness, and blocking these folks back here. And, and Brother Deegan said when it was time to go, the fire thing turned around and went behind them so they could see where they was going. That they're going through the, through, the, uh, through the water. When they got through the water, Pharaoh was showing up mad then. He got shown up mad. He said, go in there and get them. They took off in there too. God said, all right, Moses, this is it. Take that same rod, hold it back over the water, and the water came back in and drowned them just like he said. The army that's behind you, you won't see them no more. Now, I ain't going to say that, you know how we like to play on the words. They did wash up on the shore. When they seen them, the Job of dead body started washing. The Bible said they washed up on the shore. The people seen what God had did. God took nature and beat the whole army of Pharaoh, the most powerful army on the world to that day. We had an orange president that we don't like to talk about now here. A big bad hurricane was coming. It was bad. He suggested that they nuke the hurricane. Y'all might not remember that. But we as spiritual teachers and, and the side of that you can't you can't nuke God's hurricane. You're gonna kill everybody. <laughs> God's nature, God's, God's creation, God's stuff can't be stopped unless He stopped it. God had these people out here be delivering them. Those were his people. Pharaoh's army was a mechanism that he used to grow our faith, like y'all said. It was a scenario that he used to grow our faith. Of. I always use this terminology. I wasn't there, but we still talking about it to this day. Of what God did for them. And Moses was saying about it. In, in verse 3, in verse 2, the Lord is my strength and my song. He is become my salvation. He had just saved them from Pharaoh's army. He had just delivered them from uh, slavery. He is their strength. They didn't do it. It was a bunch of them out there, but they didn't, they didn't do it. They didn't rebel against it. God delivered them. So he was their strength. He was their salvation. He is my God. I will prepare him a habitation. I will prepare him a place. I was looking at that this morning. We got church building that we come to meet him at or we come to worship him in, but that wasn't what he was talking about. I will prepare him an invitation. And I found a scripture in Romans 12 and 1, Pastor Young, he said, present your body to the living sacrifice, acceptable to God. Guess where the Holy Spirit lives at now? Within us. We got to prepare our habitation. This is what he's talking about that we prepare ourselves that he can live in us. Ain't that way yet? The church is in us. The church building is where we come to work together. But we prepare him a habitation when we got saved. When we accepted Jesus Christ, we accepted his spirit, and he moved in and started dwelling with us in our habitation, in his habitation. It ain't mine. I prepared it. For him with through faith believing in him. Okay? My father's God, I will exhort him. My father's God, I will exhort him. Exhort means to lift up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he'll do what? Draw all men. I'll draw all men under me. I will exhort him. I will talk about him. Who delivered the children out of, out of Egypt. God did. Who saved the children of Israel? God did. Who saved us? God did. We should. I said a long time ago, Brother Floyd, there is two kinds of songs. Now, I ain't talking about rap. I ain't talking about blues. I ain't talking about soul music. I'm talking about there's two kinds of songs that apply to us. The first song 
is telling God how good he is. That's the first one. Telling God how good he is, what he done did, what he done did for us, what he can do for you, what he done did for the world. That's the first song. Every song that do that, that's the first song. The second song is telling you how good God is. They both are the same. We should tell, we should sing song that exhort God and the second song to do the same thing. <clears throat> exhort God by telling God what he can do for you. Me as a musician, when Pastor Grissom first come here, we had a song that was sung by, was played by a blues singer. And I didn't know what to do with it. The young person wanted to sing it. And uh, the Lionel Richie, Jesus is love. So Reverend Grissom was living right up to the Stroke Street up there. And it really did. I mean, I was just, I was just new with this and I didn't know what to do. So I got up there and he was eating his eggs and bacon and I said, Pastor Christian, they brought me a song. I wasn't looking at the song, I was listening to who wrote it. But one of the Commodores had wrote the song, the same stuff that we had danced off of when we were kids, one of the Commodores. So he said, play the song. So I took out my little tape player and then I seen his head and I watched his feet. He said, did you not hear what that man saying? That Jesus is love? It might not have scripture in him, but he's talking about Jesus. So it, it encouraged me. It still made me look at a song and see what it said or see what they're saying. But we should exalt God in what we say and we should praise him. If we should give him praise in everything we do. This lesson is ex explicitly talking about praising God in song. Something miraculous had just happened and they were singing about it. It said all of them were singing about it. Moses did it. The leader, our pastor tried to sing. I mean, our pastor sang sometimes down here. <laughs> yeah. But he prayed, saying, by the Lord, you know, you've been so good. So, we, we uh, see what God has did for them. And he said, the, in verse 3, the Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. I elaborated a while ago that he said, tell him I am. The Lord is his name. The Lord means ruler. He is the ruler. He is the it. He is the thing. Not the thing. He is the everything. I will put it like that. The Lord is his name. The Lord the one did this. That's who did it for us, Moses said. That's who brought us. That's who drowned that whole army. The scripture said that when Pharaoh said, go get them, and they went down and down, the Lord bogged down the chariot. He made the wheels heavy where they couldn't hardly get through. Because God knew once my last person put his foot on the other side in the canyon, he let that water come in and drown all of them. All the arrows, all the bullets, everything they thought they had. They didn't have no bullets, but all the in thing, instruments of water they had. The man of war, God just wipe all that stuff out with a rod. Verse 11, Exodus 15 and 11, who is like thee, O Lord, among the God? Who is like thee, glorious and holiness? I'm going to stop right there. That's part A, right? Okay, part A. Darsh, you, you remember when, when I was a kid and, and you had us standing up there and we had to learn how to sing that song. Yeah, she used to be my son's kid. She used to be my son's school teacher. I didn't know she was going to be here. But we used to stand up there and, and, and you used to make us sing, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Yeah, it did. I wrote that down too. I didn't know you was going to be here. I really didn't. We, we, the Lord it said, it said in, in this verse, uh, what was that? Who is like thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious and ho in holiness? I understand what that means now, but Elijah, when she had us sing this on me, Mr. Uh, Mr. Grafton Reed was playing first. She was on the old piano back behind over there, and, and Doris had us all, me and Diane, Diane and here, had us up there thinking we singing, holy, holy, holy. <laughs> 
Lord God Almighty, <laughs> we did. I know what that means now, Mary. I do. It would put it, I know. And we were saying it and one seeing that that was true. And he was we was telling him he holy three times. Three times. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He holy three times. He's Lord God Almighty. He's over everything. It said, early in the morning the sun shall rise to thee. Merciful and mighty God in three persons. Blessed Trinity. Yeah, she taught us this song. <laughs> and now I know what it means. And when Moses was doing, Moses gave us an example that we do the same thing. We, we sing to God and we tell him how much he means and what he is. And, and that, there's a, a, a scripture in Revelation where John seen him up there and it, it, it was angels around him. And they were singing the same thing 24 hours a day. Telling God how holy he is. Just telling him how holy he is 24 hours a day. Okay? If we look at part B, it said, Fearful in praise, doing wonder. Fearful, that's, that's verse 11. Fearful, fearful in praise, doing wonder. God had just did a great wonder. God had just did a miraculous wonder. God had took water and destroyed a whole army. The Israelites didn't have to do nothing but stand still and watch it. I'm pretty sure just like us, at first, when it first happened, we said, oh, ooh. To see something happen like this, see something, the water. I, I, I really don't know if a lot of us would have walked in between no water because a lot of people still too scared. But they trusted God and they walked through that water on this side like a wall, water on this side like a wall, and the end behind you coming, making up dust. Remember the land, the, the, it was dry land. They coming to get us with them chariots. And we going through here, then all of a sudden that water come in and the army is gone. And then we should, or they should realize, oh my God, look what God just did. That's why they saying, oh my God, look what you just did for us. Uh, later on, Brother Franklin teach, you know, at that moment everybody's mind was right. Every day morning, we would have a church. <laughs> <laughs> they, after a while, after everything wore off, them nothing here forgot what God just had did right. for them. But today, we just don't talk about singing to God, having church service out there for what He had just just did. In uh, Exodus 15 and 12. Thou steadfast or steadfast or steady are always out of their right hand and the earth swallowed them. Thirteen, thou and thy mercy have led forth the people which thou hast redeemed and hath gathered them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. God took them out there. He had told Moses to tell Pharaoh, let them go so they can come out here and worship me or serve me. So God has taken them. He was taking them to Mount Sinai so he can come down and talk to them. So he can come down and give them instruction. So he can come down and be with them. Because just like we say in them, God knows, God knows everything. But God is taking them out there so any decent person can come out there and worship with God and say, thank you for what you've done for me. You have you brought us through all this. And come down and be with them, and they be his God. He be their God. They be his children. He commune with them. And he can talk with them. He can visit them. He can sit around. He gonna be their protector because he get them prepared to go to the land, do the miracle hunting, and give them their own land and everything. But like I said, the history said it didn't, it didn't go like that. So God had to use it. And, and Frank, when I come to find out in this study, Jesus was not Plan B. He would. Another song. Hmm. 
Another song, he's there, he's there all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, we we as teachers always say, well, God knew they wasn't going to act right. God knew they were not going to act right. So he come up with a plan. But he, he that was the plan all the time. Jesus is not plan B. Oh, I delivered him from, from slavery, so I'm going to deliver him from the slavery of sin, so I got to come up with another plan. I got to make another album. You know, the Bible says Jesus was the second Adam. So I got to make a sub, another Adam because this first group didn't do right, so I got to do something. It wasn't Jesus. And it said, from the foundation of the world, Jesus was there getting ready to do what he did. He delivered us from the slavery of sin. We was, I was a slave to sin. <coughs> you, you was too. There was there was stuff in our life that just looked like we just had to do. And God delivered us from them, from them things. Through a, a same person that bring us out. Like Exodus is to be mean to be brought out, brought out. He brought us out of sin. But the only thing was the second Adam brought us out and abolished the sin all together. These rascals got out there, Brother Jeff. They even got some people together and said, you know what? We should have stayed down there in Egypt. Some famous people. The Bible calls them famous people. We should have stayed down there. We had it made. Yeah, it wasn't our house, but we was in the house. It wasn't none of our big house, but we weren't out there in the field with everybody else. We was in the house. God swallowed them too. He cracked the ground over and swallowed them. Because people should realize, we should realize that when God says he's going to do something, it's good or bad, he's going to do it. If he say he's going to take us to heaven, we're going. But I told my Bible class down here a long time ago, I was teaching back there and I had a bunch of kids in the, in the class. And we was talking about Jesus taking us to heaven. I, I go prepare a place for you. And where I go, I'll come back and get you. If it wasn't our soul, I wouldn't have told you. I wouldn't have said it. So I asked them, I said, how many of y'all going to heaven? And a few said, but there was three, two or three that said, I don't know. And it shook me because they said they didn't know. One of them said, I hope I do. <laughs> and I said, do y'all, I mean, how many of y'all believe that Jesus can do what he said he's going to do? And they all said that. I said, well, that's it right there. When you tell me he can't take you, you believe, I know about you talking about your life, but you don't believe that Jesus can do what he said he can do? And I tried to convince them, just like I convinced myself, that God said that he's going to do something just like he did these people. He delivered them from us. A very bad situation. A very bad situation they had been in for hundreds of years. But even at that, everybody didn't see it. But at this particular time, church was partying like, like Frank said. They were singing about what God had done for them. His mercy had led the children out of Israel. He had redeemed them <coughs> from slavery. He did it with his strength. And he took them to, their hab to his holy habitation. Then it skipped all the way down to verse 17. And now, Moses still singing, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance, in the place, O Lord, where thou hast made for thee to dwell in, for, yeah, thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thou hands established. I'm going to make that whole verse part A. We talked about earlier how the Bible said for us to present ourselves. Present ourselves as a living sacrifice. So God prepares. So God can live within us. Open up our heart. We got to do the cleaning to a sin. Now, I heard one preacher said, God cleans us up. That's true. And I don't come, I don't be trying to teach confusion, I don't be trying to teach conflict. God cleans us up, that's true. But there's a certain part of the house that we got to do. 
Man, he, you know, he, he's trying, he's trying to see where I'm going now. Y'all remember the scripture where it says about if, if a person have a demon cast out of them, and the demon go out, and the house is all clean and garnished and everything, and the demon go out, but when you come back and see the house all clean and garnished, but it ain't fixed up and it ain't got that holy furniture in it, he go back and get seven of his buddies, and he come back, and you in a worse condition than you were when he first cleaned you up. We got to put the stuff in here. We got to put the stuff in here. We got to make it prepare the house for him to live in. He, I ain't saying he ain't going to do it for you. He'll give you the power to do it. There's certain stuff that you have to put in. There's certain stuff you got to cut loose. Jesus said, you know, if you want, if you're out, your then you know, you know, best to plug it out. It's best to plug, it's best to go to heaven with one, go, go to heaven with one eye and go to hell with two of them. We got to prepare ourselves. We got to clean up the habitation for him to stay. Right now, he's talking about the mountain that God go out to talk to him. But it was prophetic. It prophetic. It went on that we got to prepare our way of life. We got to prepare, prepare our body for God to inhabit us. And when he do inhabit us, we do like we do today. We come down here and hear his old teacher get around us. And hope that God tell us something. Stuff that we already know, but hope God tell us something that rejuvenate what we believe in. The Israelites was this this thing happened? This was an example of what we should do. There was a there was a, a hymn that we sang. Uh, I, I didn't learn nothing from you. I <laughs> it's, it's a praise God, whom all blessings flow. Praise God from whom. All blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above, all ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He, he went through the whole spectrum of God here. Praise him, all creatures below. Praise him because he is almighty. He is over all things. Like I said, and Kate, I went to Google. I typed in songs that praising God. There were so many. And I read as many as I could take. I was overwhelmed to see how there were some people, there were some people in this world that really got it. And they put it to pen. How glorious God is and what we should do. And in these songs right here, they give us the instruction. This is, this is Psalm saying instruct. Pastor Young said that Psalms don't have chapters. Psalms have. Psalms. Mm -hmm. This is Psalms. There is, in, in the book of Psalms, there's 122, 102. You said, you said they weren't chapters. You said they were stand. I uh, call it division. Hmm. Division. Yeah. There's the 102 division. Of Psalm verses saying, sing unto the Lord. Sing of what he is and what he can do. A hundred and two of them. Telling us to sing to him. Sing to him. Tell him. Then there's a hundred and fifty more saying, I will sing or I will tell people about him. That's a lot of songs talking about, talking about what God is and what he can do. Praise God, the Father, who's the source. Praise God, the Son, who is the chorus. Praise God, the Spirit, who's the flow. Praise God, our portion here below. That's what we're saying here. Telling God, we're telling people to praise God. Praise God because He is the one that's doing it. I got it. Two more things I want to say. In, in uh, Exodus chapter 15 and 17 and 18. Thou shalt bring them in 
and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance in the place, O Lord, where thou hast made for thee, for them, for thee to dwell in, for you to dwell in the sanctuary, O Lord, thy hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. The Lord shall reign forever and ever. The Lord shall rule. The Lord shall be. He is. But the Lord shall be our ruler. Or the world's ruler. Or all creation ruler forever and ever. God promised David. He said. One of your children. Shall be on the throne forever. And David had a bunch of children. David had a bunch of wives. Solomon with his son had a thousand wives. And they had a bunch of grandchildren. He had a bunch of great grandchildren. He bunch of had everything. But God had made a promise that ran through that line and said, one of your children gonna be on the throne forever. Some of his first children were on the throne for a few years, some of them on 30 years, some of them on 60 years, some of them gone for a few months. But God told him, one of your children gonna be on the throne forever. And if you don't know the word, if we don't know how is God going to accomplish that, that one of his children is going to be on, on the throne forever. I, I, uh, uh, let's see, I'm trying to see, uh, and Kate, I'm on Facebook a little bit. I'm, I'm on Facebook a little bit. But I know how the generation stuff works. I actually put a picture on Facebook last week how uh, that my grandson is the third generation of Steel fan and everything. And I watched how generation work. I'm the, I'm the second, I'm, I'm the third generation of, of Dad Bossy, right? Hmm? Bossy. My dad is dead. Your dad is dead? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're the third. So that's how generation work. Yeah. Right. So, we got David, then we got generation. Pastor Young preached about how it was forty and two generations. Mm -hmm. Okay, y'all get the names, the generation stuff. So Jesus came along, and Jesus became one of David's great 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 great, great grandchildren. So God had made the promise with David, one of your children is gonna be on the throne forever. So, like I said, all these kids were born, all these things. So, 42 generations, one of David's sons was born. Guess what? He's still living. <laughs> and he reigned. No and doubt. he reigned. No doubt. Forever and ever. Didn't we say God do what God said he's going to do something? He do it. He did. He didn't, might not did the way we all understand. But he promised it and it happened. He promised Moses something and it happened. Moses and the children of Israelite was in an impossible situation. They were slaves. Matter of fact, they had been slaves so long that some of them, all they knew was slavery. There was a man, I, I ran about it, ran from seeing it. There was a man that when he went down there, he said, I, even when I'm dead, I don't want to be in this situation. When God gets you all out of this situation, get my bones and take them with you. Moses did it. 600,000 people in a bag of bones come out of, out of Israel, come out of Egypt. Quit smiling. Is the truth? <laughs> because God going to do, he knew when he died, God going to bring you all out of here. Do not leave me down here. And God did that miraculous feat and he wiped out that whole army. Now they sing about it. Verse 20. And Miriam. Now, Franklin, we finally got the name of him. Miriam, the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the trampoline in her hand. And all the women went out with her with the tambourine. Now, this is trammels right here in Dan. They were singing, the song got so good that the women got out there. Now, Miriam, she was, she was very important too. This is my story, this is my story uh, telling part. Uh, uh, you know, I got old now. <laughs> when Moses was born, when God delivered, when God decided to deliver the children of Israel, and like I said, Moses was born from a slave and was raised by the oppressor. But what God had did was when Moses was born, 
the another head that was over the oppressive side, it's too many. We don't need this many to work. It's too many of them. The harder we make them work, the more babies they have. So what we're going to do, we're going to go out here and cull the crop. We're going to go out here and kill some of them. So Moses' mama found out that's what he's going to do. So she took her baby, put him in a basket. All we know this story. We took him in a basket, put him in the Nile River. And God had planted the, the king's daughter with the princess. She was down there. She didn't have no children. But she was down there and the baby went down through there. She found the baby. By her not having no children, not having no children for she said, I'm going to take care of the baby. So the little girl, guess who the little girl was? Your sister. Yeah, Mary. She ran up there. She said, why don't you get one of the slaves? They do whatever y'all say. Why don't y'all get one of the slaves to nurse them and everything? So she said, that's a good idea. So Mary ran back to the house where the little boy come from. Got her mama said, go down in there. And go down there and you just go down there and be a slave and do what she says to The mama, the boy's mama, yep. went down there, took the baby, and raised her own baby. That's God, that's how God did that. So the man, the boy was raised up. So Miriam, she messed up one time, Frank. She messed up. Do I need to talk about that? Just let that go. Yeah. But anyway, she had got back right. <laughs> Nadine. God had told Moses to tell the children of his life to do something. She heard it. And she said, well, how come God can't tell us to do it? He always telling him. God got mad at her. He put some leprosy on her. She repented like we should repent in God. Straighten her back out. Now, she know God who God is now. So she ain't going to run her mouth no more. So now she actually singing to God. Because Miriam was very important in this plan. Moses, Aaron was his brother, Miriam was his sister. They all three was in this plan together, and God used these people to, to help bring the children of Israelite out, but he did. Uh, and when Miriam, they was dancing, I, my, final, my final, I said I had two more, but my final song that I, signed, I found in the book of Psalms, it said on 150, it said, for us to praise Lord, praise the Lord. Where are we going to get go? Praise the Lord on the tremble, on the tambourine, and dance. Praise the Lord on the strings instruments. Praise the Lord on the organ. This said, make a loud noise to the Lord. Praise the Lord in song. Praise the Lord in dance. We have churches that have dance in them. We have churches where we dance. We have churches that have orchestrated dance. But sometimes when God gets so good to us, we dance ourselves. When the Spirit gets to fooling with us and we start feeling Him, we get up and dance ourselves. Everybody don't do it. Sometimes we get the same enjoyment out of watching other people dance. When I first started playing in Cape, I wanted to be right. I still wanted to be right, but I wanted to make sure I was doing it the way God wanted us to do it. We was invited into a church in Nashville. And we went up there and we were playing the songs and we looked at the audience and all the audience were senior citizens. All of them. They were senior citizens. So that way we had to keep them bebop songs down, you know, and do songs. So Tabitha was singing, Be ready when he comes. There was an old lady who was sitting over there. She was 99 years old. I know because they got up and talked about it, but how old she was. And she got up on the walker, and she walked out with her two of her nurses. Then she walked out in the middle of the aisle with her walker, and then she turned the walker loose, and they turned her loose, and she stood out in the aisle, and she danced to Tabitha singing, Be ready when he come. And I knew then that God was pleased with what we was doing, because she was singing, Be ready when Jesus come. Be ready for how good, how good God is. And we sing and we dance. It's a part of recognition that we as people, as his creation, give him the glory and the honor for the things that do that he do for us. I hope I said something. I hope I said something. I, I pray to God that I said something that he wanted me to say. And I thank y'all for your time. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Frank. Pray.
Thank you, Brother White, for giving us some food for thought today. <laughs> I always love to sit under his teaching. I, I, I sit under anybody's teaching, though, so that's no idea. Right. Time to party. Uh, let's see, do, do our young people have any reviews today? Okay. Uh, I, I certainly was time to party, and our, our commentary said a song of Moses. And I'm not going to go over why that's done a, a wonderful job. So I want to say, let me talk about me. I had, uh, Mr. Digg, I had two problems with church. It's way back. One was, and I told, why don't we just talk about this in Bible study? I just couldn't stand nobody singing rap in the church. Uh, that just wasn't my cup of tea. <laughs> That's the thing. And then there was another thing I didn't like. I, I just didn't like no dancing in church. Well, I, I didn't like to. But as you read your Bible and you read all these lessons, then <laughs> when you when you when you see what God did for these people when they got on the shore and they they seen that they had been saved and they just broke out into dancing. I said, well, maybe there's something wrong with me. <laughs> you know? and, and, and God did something for David and gave them a victory, and David just danced out of his robe and stuff. I said, well, dancing is in the Bible. <laughs> what I learned was, and I, and I told the Bible to the class this, that, that an assembly, this is church, it's an assembly. And this assembly is made up of all kinds of people. They are made up of all age groups. We have our little people so there. And we have our medium people. Then we have our senior citizens. Right? What pastor have to do is make sure that the service is conducive for all age groups. So if some of the music that those little people over there like, we have to minister to those people. And, and some of us elderly people who just like hymns and things, some of us say, well, uh, hymns of old fogey and some stuff. We, we just almost got away from him. But no, no, you can't do it. You got, because there's an age group that needs him. We got to minister to them. There are some people who dance. They have to minister to them. It's all a part of worship. But what I found out is that you worship in your way. Huh? I don't have to sing a rap song. So don't need to, I ain't got to be in the condemning them to do. And I don't have to dance. If God don't lead me to dance, but why should I down those who do? We right. shouldn't do that. No. Right. We should, it, we, we, every age group in the church has to be ministered to. Now, and I'll say this on the show. Uh, God, you said something very interesting. It, it was God who brought the people. Keep this in mind. Mm -hmm. It was God who delivered the people. If we're not careful, we would give Moses all the credit. <laughs> uh, and I say that now, I'm using biblical character, but we put peoples on pedestal and we don't give God the glory mm -hmm. that he deserved. Uh, one example, I was at work and, and that we did, we wasn't allowed the Martin Luther King holiday. So all the black guys that worked, I wouldn't work for nobody. And I said, well, we don't get that day. I had to go to work. They talked about me like a dog, because I went to work. So I asked one of the black guys, what, what are you going to do Sunday? He said, I'm going to get drunk. I said, well, why don't you just go to church? He said, I ain't going to no church. I ain't. <laughs> I said that to say this. I said, but you won't give God any time, but you'll go without pay and threaten your job for Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King was an instrument that God used. And we, we have people that will put him above God. I love our pastor, but it's not our pastor that delivers us. He is an instrument that God used. Brother Wyatt is an excellent teacher, but he is only an instrument that God used. God 
to God be the glory. Just, just right. keep that in mind. And so we have to always give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. For it is he who has brought us. Right. And I'm going to leave that in. You know, anybody else have any comments or any questions? Otherwise, I left you with no doubt. <laughs> Did a thorough, thorough review of that lesson. All right, then. If, if nothing further, we will be dismissed by a word of prayer. Precious Father, again, we thank you to God for all the things that you have done for us. For we realized that we could not have done for ourselves. Thank you to God for bringing us. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for preserving us. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.